Welcome back to Inside South Florida. Are you and your family looking for something awesome to do together? Well, look no further. Here is Dr. Angela Colbert with the Frost Museum of Science's Underwater Festival. She's one of our favorite doctors, Dr. Angela Colbert, not Colbert if you're writing along at home. Uh, and you look lovely and you're wearing blue and it's themed. It you're is. just so prepared. That's what we like I, best about you. Yeah, I try to be prepared, you know, for whatever may come. Whatever may happen. That's you right. brought props, I which did. is wonderful. Um, why are you wearing blue, Dr. Colbert? Um, I'm wearing blue because it's Miami Underwater Festival next week it's going to be june 11th through the 14th and it's going to be our last signature event that we ever do at our current museum wow because right because last time you were here you were talking about the new digs that's that, right that you're moving into when does that happen uh we'll be opening to the public in summer 2016 at the brand new facility which is going to be spectacular awesome very cool all right let's talk about this underwater festival it's the fourth annual underwater festival it is okay what uh, what's going down underwater we have a lot going on actually so on june 11th, which is the Thursday night, we're going to have our Science Up Close event series, which is casual conversations, and it really tries to engage adults more so into scientific discussions. This one's called Romance on the Reef, okay. and it's talking about um, when corals are threatened out in the wild, how they actually mate with different species, and you actually get hybrid corals, and how those are, some of them are becoming actually more resilient. What is it like, um, candlelit music? How, how do corals mate? What do, yeah, what do they, you what's know, their move? I like to imagine it as a nice candlelit you know, dinner followed by a walk on the beach. Oh, clearly. Clearly, sure. clearly. Right. Um, but really what it is is um, you know, they release, and some release once a year, some release multiple times a year. These like little, they look like little white clouds of right. n nothing. And right. then they actually um, collide with another species, and sometimes it it works. Huh. They don't even have to buy them dinner. No. Wow. That's yeah, nice, next life, right? man. I'm coming back as coral. Uh, all right. Well, that's good to know. Just learned that. Uh, yes. are, there, are there other discussions of that sort of like, uh, you know, adult nature going on in that conversation? Um, there are. So for that one, it's going to be hosted by um, Dr. Nicole Fogarty from Nova Southeastern University, who's really um, on the forefront of discovering this kind of things. And then throughout the weekend, they'll actually, you can interact with even more coral experts as part of the, the weekend festivities. Uh, what actually makes this event really special though for a lot of people are the underwater films that you get to see. So this is the only time of year we bring them down, especially they're the Blue Ocean Film Festival films, which are spectacular. I've actually seen them all, so I can honestly say they're really, really cool this year, including films like Shark Girl, which um, made a little bit more press, and um, some just really beautiful, beautiful underwater footage. Shark Girl is the one about the girl that's half human, half shark, right? I hope so. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's this young, young woman in Australia who's actually um, advocating for protecting the sharks off on the Great Barrier Reef. Uh -huh and it's the tale of behind them and what you can do to, to help protect them into the future and why they're so important. There's been a lot in the news lately about uh, how close great whites uh, have actually been to our coast here in South Florida. Um, to just get a little off topic, how do you feel about, um, how do you feel about, how do you feel about sharks? But, but are they, I mean, are, are they like as menacing and horrible as we're all led to believe or do they just sort of eat us by accident because they're curious and it's our fault for being in the water? Where do you come in on all that? I come in that, you know, they're, they're living, breathing creatures just like us. And when we go into the water, you're going into their environment. And, you know, Florida does have the number one deaths for sharks, but it's usually because people aren't being intelligent about being in the water. Um, you know, they're like swimming in dawn and dusk, which is known to be when they're feeding. So if you get around them when they're feeding, they might, you know, chomp on you by accident. Mm -hmm if you're part of a school of fish that's swimming by or something like that. Um, so oftentimes the bites are mistakes and they actually will bite and release and not come back. And that shows you that in their behavior that's really just because they, um, they didn't want, mean to bite you. They just thought you were food. They mistook you for that and then right. they, they actually didn't want anything to do with you. Right. Unfortunately, it's not like when we send back soup or whatever, no harm. I mean, when they take a bite <laughs> and don't like it, yeah. that, might, that might be end of the road. Yeah. And you know, 
I've never been afraid of going in the water with them, and I know a lot of scientists that have actually gone into the water, and it's their job to swim in the water with them with chummed water, which is like Crazy. basically f food filled water. Right. And, you know, they've done it for years and years and years, and they wear the correct protective gear, but they've actually never gotten bitten. Yeah. So, I mean, there's things you can do to, to help prevent it, but accidents will happen, just like um, there was just the on the news the other day about in South Africa. How, uh, with the lion. With the lion. Right. So, right. you know, and people aren't scared to go in their car and visit a lion, so you shouldn't be scared to go swimming right. in the so ocean. So if you uh, take your car into the ocean to visit a shark, That's right. keep your windows up. Exactly. <laughs> for various, for many, many reasons. <laughs> um, uh, speak, so by the way, speaking of sharks, you've got these family fun days coming up, and one of the notes here is that people can dissect a shark and a lionfish. Yes. Li yes. Wow, lion and sharks. There you go, it's wow. together. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to be really cool. The The sharks are actually one of the smallest species of sharks. And the most common question we get is, no, we do not go out into the ocean and get them and purposely kill them or anything like that for this. They're either raised for scientific study purposes or they're bycatch. So bycatch is when um, they get caught by mistake and then they unfortunately die. Um, and so we have them. They're really cute. They're like this big. So you get to see all the different aspects of them. And the lionfish one is going to be really, really cool. Um, I think they'll help you take off the spines, which are the scary part. But besides that, you get to actually see it. And then I've heard lionfish is actually quite tasty. Ooh, all right. Come hungry. That's right. Um, 2015 annual underwater photography contest exhibit June 7th. That's right. So that's um, the annual Rosenstiel School for Marine and Atmospheric Science. They host this underwater photography contest, and it's worldwide. And it is absolutely spectacular photos this year. We have all the winners. They'll be up through the end of August. So there's a lot going on in just the next few weeks, really. Yeah. There is. All right, so people need to head down there. Frost Museum of Science, um, and you'll be there shaking hands and, you know. I will be there stuff. for everything. For every single thing. <laughs> that's right. Always wearing blue, because that's, that's what you do. Um, all right, if people uh, want more information, how do they, what do they do? They can go visit our website. It's miamisci.org. Okay, and again, Underwater Festival, it starts uh, starts soon. It starts Thursday, right? Thursday, June 11th. Yeah, and it runs how long? Through the weekend. Through the weekend, through yeah. June 14th. Sounds yep. great. Uh, one of our favorite guests. Love having you here. Oh, Thank we, you so we, much. we have like a minute oh, left. Oh, yay! Did, what did you bring us? <laughs> so I actually, since we were going to talk all about corals, brought um, some species of corals. These are just the skeletons that are left. So corals are actually animals that are alive. And um, once they're, they have this symbiotic relationship, so they have a dual relationship with algae that lives on it called zooxanthellae. Okay. I wanted to say that word because I practiced how to Z say it really hard. Yes. Should I ask you how to spell it? Or that, no. no okay. Fair enough. <laughs> zooxanthellae. Um, and that's what gives the corals the beautiful colors that you see when they're actually in there is those. Um, the zooxanthellae. The zooxanthellae. And so sure. we brought some skeletons of some corals that you would actually see here in the um, Atlantic coast and in the Caribbean. So this is fire coral, which actually, if you rub against it when it's like live, it you know, will give you a really nasty little right. scar there. Um, here we have um, some different kinds of star coral. This little guy here is called finger coral. You can hold him. Okay. And then this one over here that hurts if you touch it is cactus coral. It does indeed. It actually hurts. I don't know hurts. why I touched it. I should have taken your word for it. I know. I, yeah. I touched it earlier and I hurt myself. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> this milk is, it smells bad. It's not. Uh, thank you for bringing stuff. Thanks for coming in. You're great. And we'll Always see you a again pleasure. Soon, right? Yeah. Okay.